Welcome back. This is Brian Buchanan from the University of Alberta, Department of Critical Care Medicine. During this tutorial, we'll cover key aspects of transducer manipulation. First off, probe handling. The probe can be handled in many different ways. This is a common grip. This is called the pencil grip, but there are many ways depending on which position you're in, which, which position the patient is in. I would encourage you to try different handholds that would allow you to maintain good anatomic posture and allow you to get in the right position. Pencil grip, for example, is less than ideal for acquiring the subcostal 4 image as it requires the probe to be fanned underneath the sternum. But one of the key things is to prevent the floating wrist, to anchor the palm and wrist on the patient. That way you can maintain a steady image. Again, back to probe orientation, it is key to understand that there is a screen marker and a probe marker. Now, in traditional imaging, to emphasize, the screen marker is left, and in the longitudinal plane, cephalad is screen left, and caudad is screen right. On the right, in cardiac imaging, the marker is screen right, and it's a bit more difficult to trace the image with response with, in corresponds to anatomical planes. I would encourage you to really solidify the understanding of these planes as they are critical in multiple different approaches. So the sagittal plane, which divides the left and right side of the body, the coronal plane, which divides anterior and posterior, or dorsal and ventral, and the transverse plane, or axial plane, which you've more commonly seen on things like CT and MRI. The coronal plane is often used in thoracic and abdominal imaging, and the sagittal or even parasagittal plane is commonly used to look at the pleura as examples. Ultrasound is really a cut plane technique, which means imaging is done with respect to a 2D plane of imaging. This 2D imaging plane lines up in parallel with the probe marker. Imaging the ultras imaging, imagine the ultrasound probe as a 2D flashlight with a planar beam. All the probe movements help characterize how, the, how this beam moves. Here we can see this plane helps to understand how a cardiac image is generated. Because the heart does not lie clearly along a defined anatomical axis, it is a coordination between anatomical external features and cardiac features. This is a parasternal long axis. It is acquired at the left per parasternal space between spaces 3 and 4, and the beam cuts through the long axis of the left ventricle, as seen here, which is the more anterior portion of the cardiac structure. Now, the terminology that describes probe movement is standardized, and this diagram helps describe it. This will be emphasized in this video and throughout many of our tutorials as it really helps to clarify how images are acquired expertly. We will go through each movement one by one to ensure there's clarity. Sliding is the first movement to, to discuss. And this is really sliding, moving the probe and beam across the body in line with the long axis of the probe, nine degrees to the target. This means the beam effectively slices through a consistent anatomical plane, much like a saw. A more tangible example is the chest wall. As the probe slides up cephalad and down caudal, this cuts a parasagittal plane, we will, and we will see different costal interspaces. Rocking is another key feature. This is a more complex action, and one which people will often struggle to understand. First of all, the probe must remain fixed in one position on the body, and the probe moves or rocks back and forth along the axis of the probe. The probe moves or rocks back and forth along the long axis of the probe while ch changing the angle of incination away from 90 degrees. This illustration helps can demonstrate with respect to the plane of the probe marker. I often describe probe movements with respect to hand movements. If your thumb is the probe marker, then you can think of rocking as the handshake of probe movements. Here's a rocking example on the parasternum. This is on the third intercostal space on the parasternal axis. As the probe rocks back and forth, we can see different aspects, aspects of the heart. This cartoon at the bottom left illustrates this anatomical cross-section of the parasternal long axis and how we're really manipulating this image. Sweeping is motion in the short axis of the probe. With a consistent angle of incination at 90 degrees to the target, in, in this case the head of the probe actually moves on the body, but moves perpendicular to the long axis of the probe, or perpendicular to the probe marker. Here is an example where we've acquired a personal short axis. In this case, the examiner will move medial to lateral, and you will see a transition from the base of the heart near the mitral valve to the apex as it, is, as it sweeps laterally. This is effectively 
in the parasagittal plane for most patients. Just to review, sweeping and sliding are translational movements, but they are in orthogonal directions. So we've talked about sliding, rocking, and sweeping so far. Now to move on to fanning. I want you to imagine the two-dimensional shaped beam coming out of the end of the probe in line with the marker. Instead of moving side to side in a rocking motion, the beam will move out of plane. This motion is in the short axis of the probe. But again, the probe remains fixed on the body. You can see the demonstration here. You cannot see the marker, but it will be facing towards the patient's right side. Now the probe is, mo the probe is moving in the short axis. The word fanning describes the motion well. It is indeed much like wafting with a fan. This illustration shows the difference between rocking and fanning and how this beam moves. But the key thing to remember is both rocking and fanning involve the probe remaining in the same point in the patient's body, but with different movements of the long axis of the image. If we placed the probe in the subcostal region with the probe marker cephalad in the sagittal plane, then fanning will reveal the inferior vena cava and aorta in parallel with each other. Here is the aorta and the IVC. Pressure and compression is, is self-explanatory. I will say most people who start using ultrasound use way more pressure than needed. Always start soft and, make, and try to prevent overpressing as this will cause significant discomfort for your patient. This is especially true over intercostal spaces. Rotation, again, pretty self-explanatory. I will say most novices find it challenging to hold the probe in a good position and rotate it. This takes time. I would suggest you anchor the probe with one hand and use your other hand to retain it. So here we go. We covered fanning, pressure, compression, rotation. In fact, that's all of them from sliding, rocking, sweeping, fanning, pressure, and rotation. Again, I would encourage you to review this video a couple times to ensure that this is clarified in your head. I will leave with one last parting statement. Remember that the plane of your beam lines up with your marker. You can also use your outstretched hand and thumb as the pro marker to remind yourself of these cardinal movements. I'd like to thank you all for listening.